Florence Louise with Louise Mickey Art, and I am about to do another uh, pour for a fusion piece. And by now, I probably showed the other piece, the large one. It would have been my third piece, my third creation. This time, I'm going very small. And this is what I'm looking at. This is a little guy. He's like a little face. And <laughs> with these cool little holes here. And uh, this is what it started out like in the back. So just imagine me finding this thing on the hill. And it's a little bit fragile, but I think once it's resin, it'll be cool. Plus, it's not something that's going to be, you know, holding something weight-wise. It's just a decorative, going to be a decorative piece. So with this, I'm going to bloom. I'm going to do a bloom, and we'll see how the bloom fits on this. And yeah, so I'm going to try this two different ways. That's the interesting thing about about this creation. I'm going to do two different pillows. My regular multi-pro pillow over here, which I'll do next, and then this pillow which is uh, my Valspar, which is 833124 pouring medium paint combined with my Bear 8300. So I have about one-to-one -one ratio of Valspar to um, the Bear. So roughly 15, 18, 18 grams between the two of them here. And then I added an equal amount of that of Floetrol. So for example, if I had 15 part 15 grams of the bear combined with the Valspar, I added 15 grams of the Floetrol. And this is my consistency. It's a little thinner than my normal pillow. The idea here is I want to play around with transparent bases and I want to see how this is going to work. Fung something new. So what I've got here for colors is I have my Color Arts Bling It and this is the abalone shell. And this really is blingy. It is really like seeing snow in the sunshine sparkling. This here is my usual quinacridone Nicolazzo gold with my Zeus by TLP. This is Golden's iridescent bronze with a little bit of modern um, artist loft bronze. And this is my gold combination. So I'm going for something really simple today. Just a simple bloom. We're going to see how this works. I may add a color to this. I may add a green. I don't know. But I'm going to see how this works. So let's just uh, get started. This is a basic bloom. And I don't necessarily need to worry about going lengthwise or not. I'm just going to, I'm just going to blow out a bloom here. So my first color I'm laying down in the middle is going to be the abalone. The abalone shell. So it's basic bloom. Man, you can hardly see this. Whew, it almost disappears in there. Now my Nicolazzo gold. And this, this pouring medium pillow is very different already. It's, I can already see the paint spreading a lot easier. Now the bronze. I'm only putting down a small amount of bronze because this stuff tends to be really bossy. Got to get enough, though. A little more. And then my last is the gold. Oh, I don't even have the cell activator ready to go yet. I was thinking about putting a fleshy color in here since that piece is rather uh, akin to a face, like a mask. And so I've got my Australian, black and white. I'm going to put my black down first. So I want the black to interact with that abalone in the middle. Now, if you're curious about how cell activators work with each other in, in um, uh, sequencing, uh, I have a video, I'll link it above, that talks about that, whether you put black down first or white down first, and what happens when you do either one. All right, so here we go, the black, and the white.
There we go. Oh, that's very different. You see how that blew out? That is very different. It's always fun to see how things work differently. Now, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, wow. Huh. I could see the grid, the grading, the grading, the griddle marks of this through that center cell. The cells in the center. Oh, I hope this holds together. Please don't fall apart. Here's my shape. I do want to have this in mind. Really gentle spin. I just hope and pray it holds together. I'm looking at this to size it up a little bit to see how things might work. So I'm gonna go and fast forward here as I'm just spreading this out and shaping it a little bit. I also wanna do a little commercial break. I know I've had some subscribers wonder where I went because YouTube had taken their subscription and moved their bell to personal, which means you don't get all of the videos. So if you wanna make sure you get all my videos, Double check your subscription and make sure that the bell is on and all is selected. Then you'll get everything every time I upload. Thanks a lot. Let's see how it dries. So far the cells are holding together okay. So that's good. So I think I got the directional I want. This is done as I'm going to have it. That's where we are. I'll get a picture of it in a minute and put this to bed and we'll see how it dries. So everyone, because this is so small, I sanded this by hand. I will be skipping ahead to the stain application. All right, everybody. So this is the staining portion. I've already put two coats of the, uh, the mineral spirits on it. And now I'm just staining it and getting it ready for the next phase, which will be paint skin application after I get done of course uh, doing a second coat of stain on this this Minwax Golden Oak you can get it in any hardware store okay that's it for this phase on to the next one so here's a photo two days later I knew the translucent base was gonna work and now on to paint skin removal so I'm here to take off the paint skin and this is looking really cool I use a chisel and I go very carefully working from the outside in. And if anybody has any better suggestions, let me know. And I always kind of slide it to the side. I don't go directly. I don't go directly in at it. I just keep working slowly around until it's released. Once again, patience Keeping a firm pressure on the palette, on the uh, chisel, on the surface is important. You want to keep that pressure down. There we go. Oh my! Look. So that's got some transparency to it, so it's gonna look really cool on that piece. Hi everybody, I'm back for the uh, placement of the paint skin on this piece that is ready to receive it. Here's the paint skin, and it took me a while to cut this out. It was a monster to cut out. There are just way too many little cuts and holes here I've gotta work around. So, 
yeah, got my varnish over here. I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna give a little dose on the piece itself to get it ready. And then we'll, yeah, this was a very odd shape to work. Because I've got a lot of different little um, recesses and you, you can't have a piece, a flat piece of skin fold over a recess because it wants to buckle. So, <laughs> Okay, so here we go. It's already suctioning on, which is actually good. I want to get the placement right too, shape to work with, because it doesn't want, it's gonna get air pockets if I'm not careful. Okay, it's a little bugger. I think I'm gonna have to hold on to it until it's fully secured. Okay, so this is where we are. So everyone, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed the video. Here are the resin results. I didn't show the resin part because it's so small, it would've been hard to show that. Look at how that translucent base allowed the wood to show through. My only regret with this piece is I probably should have used more vibrant colors because this color palette kind of blends in with the wood, but lesson learned for the future. At the end of this video, I'm going to have a link to my other fusion pieces. And if you're new here and haven't subscribed, please subscribe, hit the bell and all. You'll get all my latest art tutorials. Leave a comment that would also be appreciated and a thumbs up is always nice too. So thanks a lot, everybody. Until next time, take care.